Hello everyone. Well, today I've got a vacuum cleaner for our four-legged friends and I have two of them here. This is Daisy and hiding behind the box. Come on Molly, make, your, make an appearance on the video. There's Molly. This is a pet grooming vacuum. Now at the time of making this video, we're in lockdown as a lot of the world are. And uh, one thing we can't do, we can't go to the hairdressers, no problem for me, I've no hair, but we can't go to the poodle parlours either. We can't take our dogs for their regular trimming. Daisy doesn't need trimming, but Molly certainly does, and it's getting a bit warm. So I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to do it myself with this Milo and Misty Pet Grooming Vacuum Set, model 3000100. This is also available under the Von House brand and if I've got a link to buy one, if you want to buy one after watching the video, I'll put a link somewhere below this video. So without any further ado, let's see what we get inside the box. Upon opening the box, this is the first thing you'll see, an instruction book. There's some clippers there, special dog clippers. A combination tool, which is a crevice tool and a dusting brush. I'm not sure how we're going to vacuum the dog with that, but I think that might be for vacuuming the area that we're grooming the dog. We've also got a special dog grooming attachment. Various different lengths of comb to suit different lengths of a dog coat. We also get a little bottle of oil for the clippers. And underneath all this foam we have the vacuum and hose so I'll just get all this opened and unwrapped and we'll have a closer look well here it is out of the box this is the base unit that contains the suction motor plus the on off and speed control so you've got variable speed you can go from low to high and there's a vac only setting and here we have the clear bin. Obviously, this is a bagless cleaner. And surprisingly, we have an EU energy label on this machine. Now, we have a different energy label now. It doesn't have as many results on it, the new ones. In fact, a lot of vacuum cleaners you can buy today don't actually have an EU energy label. I'll have to cut that off in a minute. So, this uses, on average, 21.5 kilowatt hours per annum. It gets an E rating for dust emissions. It gets a C rating for dust pickup from carpet. It gets an A rating for dust pickup from hard floors and it's 76 decibels. I'm a little bit <laughs> confused as to why we've got a carpet and hard floor um, rating on this machine because this cleaner isn't a regular vacuum. It's not really for vacuuming your home. Although this attachment here, the combination tool, can be used in your home. You can use it for dusting around. You can use it to clean up your pet bedding, I suppose, or inside the car. But this is the only nozzle you get that's actually for vacuuming anything other than your pet. I don't think it's suitable for actually using on a pet, but I suppose you can with the brush down. If I can pull it down, I'm sure it's supposed to just move along but I can't seem to see how that works at the moment because there's no release button. No, oh, there we go it's just a bit stiff so I suppose you could use that on a, on a short-haired dog on low power so I'm not really sure why this nozzles included but there you go so this is the bin we'll take off the label and we'll have a look so basically this is a cleaner specifically for grooming your pets. Now it says pet, I suppose it could be used on cats and maybe rabbits. I don't think it's suitable for very small animals like hamsters, but um, it's certainly suitable for dogs and hopefully I'll demonstrate how suitable it is with one or two of my dogs. So this is a little suction unit, it's quite dinky, it's got four nice swivel casters and the wattage of this machine is 700 watts underneath it's got an exhaust filter which should lift out so that's your final filter 
All the filters I'm about to show you are washable, but make sure they're left around 24 hours to dry thoroughly. So that's in the base. You shouldn't have to deal with that filter very often, being the exhaust filter. That should stay fairly clean. There is a filter here as well at the top of the motor, and this is a thick foam. And there's another one underneath as well. So you've got combination of a foam and a fabric filter. Again, both of these are washable and the motor is situated under here and they can go back there. There's also a filter in the dirt bin at the top. You have to remove the stopper. And then this fine mesh filter comes out. You might find that traps pet hairs around that. So you need to keep that clean otherwise you'll suffer a loss of suction. Always make sure that all the filters are in place before using the PET vacuum. That just pushes in and then we've got the stopper and again make sure that's properly in place otherwise you will lose suction. And you empty the bin, there's a little press button and it opens up for you to empty it out and it's quite a large bin you can get a, a damp cloth if you want to give this a wipe out from time to time so that's the bin assembly and that will fit of course on top of the motor unit let's see thank you push it that's it is that in place yes there's a carry handle so you can carry the machine to where you want to go but it's also got a plunger feature which is quite useful by pressing down on the carry handle that moves this round, there's another mesh, a bit hard to see in the bin, but that will actually clean a lot of the pet tear that might have become trapped. By pressing that down, that should release any pet tear for you to be able to empty it easier. So let's have a look at the hose. It's, uh, it's a nice length, probably long enough to do even a large dog. and. The grey end is the end that fits into the cleaner. So that just pushes in. It swivels as well so it shouldn't tangle up. And if you want to release the hose, there's two buttons either side you need to squeeze. And then this is the end where you attach the accessories. And they clip in like this. So there's the combination tool. It's very like the tool you'd get on your regular vacuum. Press the button to release it. Then we've got the grooming tool and on my channel quite a while ago I demonstrated the Dyson groom tool with my dog Daisy. So I'm going to get Daisy a bit later on in the video and see how this one works. It's a very similar principle, very very fine tines on this. So only suitable really for long haired dogs, I wouldn't use it on a short haired dog. They're not a bit sharp I think, so on a long haired dog obviously go gentle. But what this does, it grabs all the hair and then to suck it into the cleaner you press on this lever here and then in theory all the hair that's been caught should be drawn into the machine. So that's that. Now this is the clipper attachment. Now I'm assuming this is actually an air powered attachment because there are no mains leads, no electrical connection inside the hose. So this will work in a similar way to a turbo nozzle on a vacuum cleaner. So there'll be a turbine in here that actually rotates um, due to the power of the suction and it'll make the clippers move back and forth. So obviously you need to keep the clippers well oiled and cleaned but it's very like a normal dog grooming set or one you even use on your own hair where you can attach the varying different lengths of clipper. Let's see if is that right. There we go. So that's obviously one of the longest clippers. So what I'm going to do if I if I'm brave enough to try it on Molly, I'll probably start off using one of the longer clippers, maybe this one, and just seeing, just doing it gently. But 
At the time, as I said, we're in lockdown. She can't go to her normal dog groomer and the weather's getting quite warm. Her hair's getting quite long. So I think she will benefit from having her hair trimmed. It doesn't really matter if it looks a bit of a mess. It's the dog's comfort that's more important to me than how she looks. And Molly doesn't look in mirrors very often, so it should be fine. Okay, so that's all the attachments. As I said, I first will try the machine out using the groom tool with Daisy, who isn't afraid of vacuums. If your dog is afraid of vacuums, this cleaner, this pet vac might prove a little problematic. We'll see how noisy it is. It's under 80 decibels, so that's not too noisy. And I believe it's a four meter cable on this cleaner. To turn the cleaner on, there's a power switch located just under the hose inlet. You can use your hand or foot to turn the machine on and off. And just above the hose inlet, we've got the speed control, so we can vary the speed from low to high and vac only, which you can't use when using the clippers. You have to use either low, medium or high. So when you turn the machine on, a blue light will appear on the speed control and you can use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the suction. So here we have Miss Daisy here looking quite chilled and relaxed. She's fairly used to vacuums so the noise shouldn't bother her but I suggest you try using the tool before you use the actual vacuum function so you could actually take it off the hose if you want to and just get the dog used to the feel it's a good girl. She's not too keen, but she'll do it. So I'm just gently, without pressure, moving the groom tool over Daisy's long coat. And we can see, very hard to see because she's got black hair, but it has caught some hair on the actual nozzle. So to remove it, what we can do, we can turn the cleaner on and hopefully the hair will disappear when I press the lever. Didn't pull it in straight away, but I was on low power at the start. I might try it on a higher power. Now you can actually groom the dog with the suction going. So that will also help any sort of dandruff or dander or whatever dogs get in their coats. That will also be sucked up as you're grooming and then occasionally, obviously, you need to press on the button to release the hair. So we'll try it on medium power, I think, with Daisy and we'll uh, see how it performs. <laughs> So as you can see, Daisy wasn't too bothered about being groomed. She doesn't like being groomed at the best of times, but she coped and a few treats helped to placate her. But yeah, she's not uh, under any trauma. And as you could see, she was yawning for quite a lot of that session. So it's just a quick session just to show you. And actually more hair's coming off, so I've, I'm going to have to do it properly later on. So we'll just have a look at the hair that's gathered. This uh, works fairly well, but as you could see, it wasn't always sucking the hair in straight away. You just have to rub your hand over it to allow it to go into the suction inlet and into the bin. We can see some of Daisy's hair in the bin. Now before emptying, you're supposed to press down on the handle to compact the hair. So I'll do that, let's press it down. It's not really compacting it much, but anyway, we'll release the bin using the button at the back of the cleaner. 
And if I open it up, obviously, normally you take this outside to open and dispose of the hair. But just to show you, well, that's quite a lot. It's new, so there's quite a lot of static in here. That is, that isn't bad. Now, I've more or less shown you a very slight bit of editing, but basically what you've seen is what, I, what uh, I've actually picked up from Daisy's hair. I mean, it didn't take very long at all. And already I've got that amount of hair, so she could do with having a longer session. But apart from the hair, there's other little bits, little debris in there that is gathered by the vacuum and not going all over your furniture. So it is quite effective. Uh, unfortunately, though, not that I've been doing it for very long, but there is already a very slight amount of dirt on the pre-motor filter. But obviously it will take a while for that dirt to pass through. This, this side of the motor filter is clean and, of course, that one is as well. So as long as you keep the filters clean, especially if you've got lots of dogs you need to groom with more hair than Daisy, you need to make sure you keep the filter clean. And, of course, the central shroud which does have a little bit of hair on it. That's the most important filter to keep clean because that is the first line of defense. So yeah, there was a little bit of hair in that. After every use, just make sure that that's clean. You don't have to wash the filters after every use though. So that goes in there. So it's relatively quiet. You attach it to the back first, I think, or is it at the front? No. You locate it at the front first, sorry. You see the lip there, you just put that towards the front, then you push it back. There we go. That's in position, yes. Right, well, that's fairly successful. It works on a similar way to the Dyson Groom Tool. So let's have a look now at the clippers and see how they work. So if I switch the cleaner on now, we should have some movement on these blades. So as you could see, hopefully, the more I turned up the suction, the faster the blades moved. So obviously on high power they will move faster so i don't know whether to try a bit on daisy because she is certainly more at ease with uh, being trimmed you can of course use the clippers without a guard on now daisy's paws are quite long and i normally have to trim those by hand so i'm just just going to see out of interest using the shortest comb which is a six millimeter or quarter inch I think that is size so we'll just see how it works ideally I would like to do Molly completely but Molly is a tough nut to crack regarding vacuums and grooming because she hates the vacuums and she attacks them so I don't know how she's going to cope with this so I might not be able to do it on Molly but with a bit of training I might be able to but just to see how well this actual clipper works on Daisy's paws I'll give it a go now There you go, good girl. Right, she wasn't keen, but she did let me trim some of her feet. But obviously this is the first time I've introduced this to her. And she hasn't done that badly. And obviously when you get one of these, if you decide to get one, you're not going to be filming it. Take your time, introduce it slowly to your dog. But if your dog is used to going to get clipped at grooming parlours, 
it might be okay. In fact, I'm going to try it on Molly because she does go to a professional groomer who will use clippers like this. Whether or not they're attached to a vacuum, I don't know. But she'll be used to the sensation and the noise of clippers. So I'm going to try <laughs> a little bit of Molly's hair. But obviously, once I've tried, tried it on Molly, I'm going to have to finish, depending on how uh, upset she gets. So hopefully she won't uh, be too upset about it. But on the whole, I'm pretty impressed with how this clipper works. I mean, there's absolutely no hair, obviously. It clips the hair and it sucks it into the vacuum. So there's absolutely no mess. And I can see that all the hair that I've trimmed off has ended up inside the container. So if I press down the plunger again, which is, to be quite honest, a bit ineffectual because there's hair trapped around the top here. So you're still gonna have to put your hand in to um, release the hairs but if I carefully open up the bin we can see that's all the hair that I've taken from Daisy's paws but there's quite a lot actually in the top of the bin so it's a case of having to put your hand in I'm afraid but if you're a dog owner you'll be quite used to dealing with the mess our beloved dogs and cats and other animals produce. But that, instead of going all over, if I was to use these clippers, a set of clippers without the suction feature, obviously all this that I've just removed from Daisy's feet, paws, would have been all over the footstool that she's sitting on now. So I think it's pretty effective. Okay, well, you've seen Daisy, who's pretty well behaved. Now it's time to introduce you to Molly. Well, here's Molly. Molly is a cross. I think she's crossed between a Scotty dog and something else. Is it a poodle? I, I don't know, Molly, what you are, but anyway, we didn't have Molly from a pup, did we? we, we she was a few years old when we got Molly. And uh, Molly doesn't uh, shed or molt like a lot of dogs. So she has to have the hair removed and it's getting quite long. She's looking a bit of a mess, but uh, she probably looks a lot better than she's going to. I'm gonna try it. I'm getting her sort of all relaxed. I'm gonna give her some treats before introducing the old, yes, the clippers. Um, and I've got the shortest clipper on. I'm just going to try it a little bit, but obviously I'm not going to put Molly through any uh, distress. Might have to wait for her other daddy to come home to uh, hold her while we shear all the hair off. But I just want to see in principle if this uh, Milo and Misty pet vacuum with these clippers will actually do the job I want it to do. Okay, well, I've decided you can, it is working and uh, I think she'll be okay. But what I think I'll do, instead of starting with the uh, shortest clippers, you're a good girl. Um, I'll go on to a longer, the next one up, I think, because I just want to take a little layer off first. But I think she'll be okay. I'm not going to video the whole thing, but if I can just get a hair to an even, sort of consistency so she's not laughed at in the park or on the moor but yes already I mean it's it is working so I'm quite pleased with it so far as long as Molly will allow me to do her whole coat we should have a completely different looking dog by the end of the video
Well, it's a work in progress and I've got a lot more to do, but I've got her uh, and it looks a mess. She's not going to be entered for crafts, but as long as I persevere, it's not doing bad and there's no mess. But what I have noticed, it looks like we need to empty out the hair. Still got a lot of you to do, Molly, but she's doing very, very well considering. But I've noticed that uh, there's quite a lot of hair in that bin and other mess as well. So let's just release the bin and have a look. Look at that. This is all the hair that would have been, of course, all over. Oh, crikey. Look at that. Now this will come in very useful for my other vacuum cleaner demonstrations when I need to test for pet hair pickup. So I'm keeping all this because normally when Molly goes to the groomers, obviously we don't really ask for the hair back. Look at that though, look at it. Absolutely full and we've still got a long way to go. And we'll see what she looks like at the end of the session. Well everybody, here's Molly after quite a long clipping session. I don't think I've done a bad job on her. If you remember what she looked like at the start of the video. She's fairly evenly trimmed, aren't you? I did, uh, to be honest, I did a few little bits with the scissors just around her eyes and a bit of trimming as well. But um, she survived the ordeal, haven't you, darling? So all in all, my first attempt at clipping Molly, I think I've done a fairly good job. What do you say, Molly? Yes, not too bad. And this is all the hair I've clipped off Molly that the vacuum picked up. I had to empty it once during the session, but that is a lot of hair that would have gone all over the carpet had I not had the Milo and Misty pet vacuum. Well, that's about the end of my video on the Milo and Misty pet grooming vacuum. On the whole, I think it does a pretty good job of grooming and clipping my two dogs. Um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it overall. If you have any comments or questions about this machine, please comment in the space below. Don't forget to subscribe, thumb up, and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.